Welcome back, everyone, to the Squared Circle Podcast. Andy here, coming to you from Weymouth, right here in Dorset. What a week. It's been in professional wrestling since we last saw you. It's been manic. We've had everything from the Royal Rumble Premium Live event to the end of Vince McMahon. And we're going to be talking all about it tonight here on the show. But before we do that, let's just welcome a whole new host of listeners uh, from Maguire on Wrestling. TSE is now part of Team MOW Maguire on Wrestling. Uh, you can listen to us and Mike's show and the alternative commentary guys every week. All you need to do is search for Maguire on Wrestling on all main podcast providers and come and find us on social media on Facebook at Maguire on Twitter at Maguire on uh, formerly known, well. X, formerly known as Twitter, Twitter, not now yet, you know what I mean, uh, and be a part of the conversation because we are looking forward to being a part of MOW going forward, and uh, it all kicks off this week with this show. Now, if you would like to get in contact with us, you can do not only via MOW, but against our social media as well, and all you need to do is head to Facebook, Instagram, X, youtube at tsc wrestling pod and then you can use the hashtag tsc pod if you want to subscribe to us on audio you can do just search for the squared circle or subscribe at mcguire on wrestling and you get the whole network of mow shows and become part of the family uh, and i just want to address that one if i can really quickly because uh, this whole thing came about really quick um you know i've known mike now for coming up to a year i think and mike's been on our show a couple of times and i've been on mike's show a couple of times and um yeah it, it's it's a great honor to be asked to join mcguire on wrestling and to join the guys from act and, and to be a part of the community and i know sam's really excited and, and i'm really excited to see where this goes and you know i just want to really thank mike for giving us the opportunity to come on board and to be a part of this journey so i hope you stay with us i hope new mow listeners you're enjoying the show uh, if you've never listened to tsc before well normally there's two of us uh well the last couple of months it's, it's been just me i've been on my todd but normally sam joins me or lee will join me uh but regardless you're gonna have fun coming up this week on tsc we are of course going to be talking about vince mcmahon and those allegations. We've got the rest of the news line. We're going to have a viewpoint on all the roads. See what I did there? Lead to WrestleMania, uh, where we're also going to be looking at what we, what I think WrestleMania 40 card could be now that we've got an injury to play. As well as that, we've got the usual This Week in Wrestling History, and we're going to wrap it up with uh, Chat GPT and Ask TSC. So let's get to it. Let's go to a break. When we come back, it's time for the news. Check out All Elite Wrestling Explosion exclusively here at TSC. The Bite Size Podcast released weekly will give you the breakdown from what has happened on Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. This quick stopping podcast will recap all of the slams, all of the body slams, and all of the side suplexes. Welcome back to TSC and to the news. And what can more can be said than the wrestling landscape, the wrestling business has changed forever. Vince McMahon officially now has stepped down from all positions within TKO, including that of the executive chairman uh, and the board of directors, forever altering the wrestling business as we know it. Now, this decision follows a lawsuit which has accused him of being involved in a sex trafficking and abuse scandal by a former WWE employee. The report that was released last week was over 62 pages long. I haven't read it. Uh, I've got no intention of reading it, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's quite scary. TKO submitted an SEC filing regarding the resignation of McMahon saying the following on january the 26 2024 vince mcmahon notified the board of directors the board of tko group of his resignation from his positions as executive chair and a member of the board and any other positions of employment or otherwise he has at tko and its subsidiaries in each case 
with immediate effect as of January the 26th, 2024. Now, unlike 2022, there is no way Vince can come back to WWE. This time, Vince is gone. And from what we're hearing, and I'm sure Dave referenced it when he was talking to Mike about it on MOW this past week and more obviously next week, Ari Emanuel from Endeavor is going to do anything he can to clean up the culture of the WWE. And that means getting rid of anyone who may have been associated with Vince or to potentially be a part of that. So that does raise the question of guys like Bruce Pritchard. Is he going to be safe or is he going to be doing more something to wrestling? But I suppose the big question a lot of you may be asking if you haven't heard MOW or if you haven't heard of the of the situation is what actually happened. Well, these are the highlights. Janelle Grant, a former WWE employee, has filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the District of Connecticut. Now, the lawsuit targets McMahon and the WWE accusing McMahon of sex trafficking. Grant previously made allegations back in 2022, one of which led to McMahon's retirement, subsequent return, and of course the sale of WWE to Endeavor. She claims that McMahon promised her career advancement, then allegedly exploited and trafficked her to other men within the company. Now, this is really where it kind of gets interesting. In 2022, Grant signed a non-disclosure agreement with Vince, agreeing to a $3 million payment to refrain from publicly disparaging him or discussing their relationship. Now, she is alleging that McMahon ceased payments after receiving $1 million, one third of the amount that was agreed. The lawsuit is looking to void the non-disclosure and also seeks additional financial damages. Now, the investigation, if you remember back to 2022, by the then board of directors for WWE into the relationships, revealed that $14.6 million of the $20 million payments should have been recorded as company business expenses. The company amended SEC filings accordingly, with McMahon reimbursing the company for the expenses. In a later filing, WWE disclosed that on July the 17th, 2023, federal law enforcement agents executed a search warrant and served a federal grand jury subpoena on Vince. No charges have been filed. WWE has received legal demands for documents related to the investigation, and the recent WSJ article indicates the grand jury is linked to the Janelle Grant payout that was made. Vince isn't taking it lying down, as you can expect, and he has put out a statement saying the lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene, made up instances that never occurred and a vindictive distortion of the truth. He will vigorously defend himself. Wow. I mean, you know, I've been a wrestling fan since 1987 and, and many people who have been on this podcasting journey with me will know that, you know, I, my first wrestling event was WrestleMania three back in March, back in 1987, we didn't get VHS cassettes for about six months. So, you know, I didn't see WrestleMania until September. And I remember the, the, the majesty of seeing Hulk Hogan body slam Andre, the giant in front of that groundbreaking Guinness world record crowd. But I also remember this larger than life, character this one vincent kennedy mcmahon and whenever you think of professional wrestling you have to think of vince vince did it all he was the groundbreaker he made the business what it is today he made the wwe whether you like it or whether you don't what it is today without vince there would be no tony khan without vince there would be no tna there'd be no new japan so for this to suddenly blow up really kind of affects your history you know it affects how you perceive professional wrestling it affects how you perceive the industry how you perceive the business you know this isn't the only scandal that we've had over the years because who can forget the 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 me too movement 
just a few years ago when superstars such as Marty Skull, our own, was put into the limelight. Some ways it's fair to say that wrestling is not a nice sport, but I don't believe that. I've been involved in it for a number of years. I've been a commentator. I've been an agent. I've been a talent. I've been a booker. And there are a number of good guys out there. But this really does kind of hurt because this is Vince McMahon. And this this is the god of professional wrestling. This is the guy who who created the industry, who made it what it is today, who gave us Hulk Hogan, who gave us WrestleMania, who gave us Bret Hart, who gave us Stone Cold, who gave us The Rock, who gave us Triple H, who gave us John Cena. And this massive fall from grace. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't condone these allegations. And if this proves to be true, I I don't condone it at all. But what we've also got to bear in mind that this is all alleged. Now, there's no court case. There's no charges been filed. It's alleged. And let's take that for what it is. Let's remember the old adverts. Innocent until proven guilty. And I think we need to remember that as professional wrestling fans. Vince is a lot of things. Yes, Vince should never have powered himself back into the WWE. It should have been left to Steph. Steph and Nick Khan were doing a great job. It could still have been where it was. <clears throat> but he didn't. He came back. He did the power grab. Sold it to Endeavor. Ari Emanuel is now in charge. I don't think Vince ever expected this to come out. At least I hope he didn't. But if he didn't, you got to think maybe you're a bit short-sighted. Or was he a very clever man? Get back in. Sell the company. Get some more money under my belt. And let's deal with what happens when it happens. I don't know. But what is interesting is the reaction that it's getting in the business. Now, the according to PW Insider, internal reaction is predominantly one of happiness and relief, as many believe that McMahon deserved the consequences of the allegations made in the lawsuit. Although some individuals within the company anticipated Vince's resignation, they didn't expect it to occur so quickly. The report stated that one source described Vince as a black cloud hanging over everything, even though he wasn't involved in anything. McMahon's presence in the company, especially after Hunter took creative control, was seen as more of a ceremonial role. But it goes even further because superstars are now beginning to speak out. And the first one was Ronda Rousey. The baddest woman on the planet surfaced on X this past weekend with comments about Bruce Pritchard in reaction to the news regarding Vince and his resignation. She says that WWE, through Pritchard, was run by Vince. Bruce Pritchard is basically Vince's avatar, she wrote. If he's still around, Vince still has a hand in the business. She added Vince was still running things through Bruce when he was gone before. Now, I did kind of make a bit of a tongue and joke about this earlier on, about Ari Emanuel coming into clean house. In all seriousness, you've got to imagine that close allies to Vince are going to be going. And I can't think of any ally now that Kevin Dunn has left the company, which again, you know, read between the lines here, two and two making five. Kevin Dunn retires in December. This all happens now. Did he see the writing on the wall? You've got to think that Bruce Pritchard is next in line to uh, to be ousted by Ari Emanuel as he plans to clean up the WWE. What was interesting was the press conference at WWE Royal Rumble at the PLE this past Saturday. Because the media, well, they asked the questions. We know WWE talent were told to kind of refrain from comment, keep the storyline, and move forward. So Cody Rhodes was asked during the press conference, and he said, and I quote, I know as far as the news is concerned, we were finding out and reading the same thing you guys were reading. 
You said a dark cloud, certainly. As far as TKO, Nick Khan and the board clearly took it very seriously, acted immediately, and looking at the future, I don't know the answer to that. And I think somewhere is a really probably basic tenant of this crew, more than ever from a roster standpoint, is very family. I've never seen anything like this. Most of the time, wrestling locker rooms are fighting, talking trash, making fun of each other, sandbagging each other in the ring, and all that nonsense. This crew is very team-based. Perhaps that's the ingredient. Everyone looking out for everyone, being accountable. For me as a performer, I've been through dark periods in our industry. It might sound cheesy, but it's very reinforcing if you're in my position. That it's a time when, hey, we have 50,000 people out here. I want to give them something else from this weekend that isn't a terrible situation, but terrible news. And I think we were able to do that. Obviously, as more news comes out, we'll be seeing it like you do. Say what you want to say about Cody Rhodes. I've met Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is a genuinely nice guy, and I'll, I'll touch more on that in just a second. This was an honest answer by him. It's one that I respect him for because he didn't kind of tie the company line. He didn't play it down. He kind of went, yeah, it's a dark cloud. It really is. It's it's a dark moment, but we don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on what we've achieved at the PLE. We want to focus on what we've achieved in front of a record-breaking crowd in Florida in Tampa, I want to achieve on being the first man in 25 years to win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles. He's not shying away from it. And I think that is a testament, really, to Cody. So a few years ago, Cody was in the UK, and I was working for a company called Ultimate Pro Wrestling, and it was based here in the south coast of, of England. And we did a double header. So we did a Saturday-Sunday show that was... Um, Cody Rhodes as the headliner and I had the privilege of calling Cody's matches at ringside and on night one of the double I remember going up to Cody and, and, and talking to him and, and kind of doing what you do as a, as a commentator you, you kind of ask the questions you know what can I do to help you um, is there anything you, you don't want us to, to mention is there anything you do want us to mention is there anything you want us to call not to call Etc. 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 And I struck a rapport and I got talking with Cody. <clears throat> and we had a fan who was coming to those shows who unfortunately had epilepsy and, and quite severe. And he was quite a loyal fan. And I remember going to Cody and saying to him, I've got this fan who was desperate to come and see you. He had a fit this morning couldn't travel, couldn't make it to the show. And without hesitation, Cody said, give me the phone. And he took the phone and he recorded this message, this personalized message to the fan, and we sent it to him. And on the anniversary, every year, that fan posts it back up on Facebook. Because that 30-second promo that Cody did, that made his day. And I didn't ask him to do that. I didn't say to Cody, can you cut this promo for me? Can you wish the guy well? He did it on his own back. And I think that kind of resonated in that statement. Cody was all about putting the crew over, putting the locker room over, putting the family over. Vince is a dark sheep of that family now. He did, however, do it better than Triple H because Triple H... Well, he just sandbagged it. He put, I'm going to do exactly what you would expect me to do here. We just had an amazing week. 10-year, $5 billion Netflix deal. Rock joining the board. Sold out Royal Rumble. I choose to focus on the positive. That was a mistake. Triple H shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have not answered. He had an opportunity. And I think this was a mistake by Endeavor. He had an opportunity to read a statement on behalf of him, on behalf of Steph, on behalf of Endeavor, on behalf of TKO. And that would have put it to bed. But he didn't. And I actually think that hurt Triple H. That's hurt his reputation. 
Don't get me wrong. It'll be blown over in a couple of weeks. Nobody will remember what Triple H said at the PLE at the press conference. But this moment, he got a lot of backlash. And it's something that he needed to deal with and action with in a more executive way, a more professional way. And he didn't do it. Now, there are a group of people who you think are really going to be affected by this because it's their father-in-law. That's their stepfather. Um, and that's John Laurinaitis. He's also been involved in this. And that's the Garcia twins, otherwise known as the Bellas. They put, we are shocked and disheartened with the recent allegations against members of the WWE. It has been a lot to process since we found out this past week, just as you all did. This is something we don't stand for or condone from anyone, no matter who they are. They want all women, or we want all women to feel safe and supported in the workplace and in their everyday lives. Now, you've got to think, they've been through this twice in a couple of years. If the Bella Twins um, documentary was still going, you've got to wonder whether or not Laurenitis and their mum would still be together. I don't know. The other thing is it's mentioned a former WWE and UFC champion. That has now been confirmed as being Brock Lesnar. Lesnar was pulled from this past Saturday's PLE Royal Rumble and replaced by Bron Breaker. Breaker came in and did everything that Lesnar was meant to do, including getting eliminated by Dominic Mysterio. So that's got to make you think that Breaker is now in line for a main roster push. It also has got to make you think that Lesnar isn't coming back to the WWE. Internal reaction is that they don't expect him to. Let us know what you think about the McMahon allegations across social media at both Team MOW and on our Facebook pages as well. All right, other news. Let's get to it. Pat McAfee is back in WWE. He was surprised this past Sunday at the Rumble, uh, this past Saturday at the Rumble PLE. Then last night on Monday Night Raw, he comes out and they announce he is now back permanently and part of the Raw team. What was interesting here was McAfee kept referring to one last run. Now, that is obviously in reference to Michael Cole, who has gone on record to state that I'm not going to be doing this for a long time now. So I'm wondering, and I wonder what you guys think, will Michael Cole retire when Raw moves to Netflix? So if we got one more year of Michael Cole, that will give him all of the major PLEs to cover one more time. And would he end and pass the baton over to whoever it is on that first Raw of the Netflix era. Corey Graves, however, has moved to SmackDown, and he will now be the lead announcer alongside Wade Barrett, replacing Kevin Patrick, who was fired just a couple of weeks ago. Personally, I'm all for it. Michael Cole and Pat McAfee on SmackDown was a winning combination. I love McAfee on, on commentary with Cole. It brings out a whole new dimension to Michael. So I'm loving what they're going to do with Monday Night Raw. It's going to make it more entertaining. I'm intrigued to see how Corey Graves in a lead announced position handles working with Wade Barrett. Two color guys, both of them heel, really. How is that going to play? We're going to have to find out this Friday night on Fox uh, in the States or on TNT Sports here in the UK as SmackDown returns to the airwaves. Now, a bit of sad news. WWE star and former Money in the Bank winner Otis has announced on social media that his mother has passed away. The Alpha Academy member wrote the following, rest now forever when now there is no more pain. Because of you growing up, I've memorized every John Candy movie introduced and jammed to Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Stevie Nicks. Race and peace, guys. And our condolences go out to the friends and family of Otis uh, for the loss of his mother. Hiroshi Tanahashi has big goals as the new president of New Japan Pro Wrestling. The ace and the reigning television champion spoke about building the promotion its own venue during a recent interview with Tokyo Sports. Tanahashi says that as much as he loves the legendary Karakan Hall, he would love for New Japan to have its own building and suggests calling it the Inoki Arena after the founder, the legendary Antonio Inoki. He said, I want to build New Japan's own venue. It is a great honor to be able to hold many matches at Karakan Hall, a sacred place for martial arts. However, 
in order to expand the size of the company, we want to hold large tournaments at a permanent venue that can accommodate three to 4,000 people. For example, it would be a dream to build the Anoki Arena in Tosuki, where the market has relocated in the name of Antonio Anoki, the founder of New Japan. The Immortal One, Hulk Hogan, has spoken about his tribal chief during a recent interview with Sports Illustrated, which was conducted after Reigns defended the Undisputed Championship at the Royal Rumble. Hogan begins by claiming that Reigns paints masterpieces every time he steps foot inside a WWE ring. He said, it takes a really long time to be able to transition and pivot on a dime the way he does. That's how he paints masterpieces you've never seen before. He's working on a whole different level. As previously been reported both on this show and on Maguire on Wrestling, TNA superstar and current TNA knockout Jordan Grace was an entrant in the 2024 Royal Rumble. According to Fightful Select, WWE contacted TNA that weekend to inquire about Grace's availability. The juggernaut had a physical and blood work done on the Monday, flew to Florida on Thursday to participate in rehearsals. And WWE sources tell this publication that everyone on the TNA side was easy, easy to work with, including Grace, and to clarify, she is still signed with TNA. You've got to think that Jordan Grace is on WWE's radar to come in. And why wouldn't she be? She was a monster, put on a great performance. And in fact, Jordan Grace on X turned around and said, you're not seeing the last of me or TNA yet. So what does that indicate? Could we be seeing more TNA performers in a crossover? For, for me, I've got no problems with WWE and TNA doing a Forbidden Door style event where it's WWE versus TNA. You know, this whole Forbidden Door cliche that they've come up with, right? I mean, it, it was cute when it first started, but now it's just, it's used too often. What is wrong with companies working together collaboratively to put on something that the fans want to see? I would love to see, you know, Josh Alexander facing off against Xavier Woods or The Miz or LA Knight or Gunther facing off against certain individuals. TNA has got a great roster. WWE have got a great roster. Let's combine the two and see where we go. What do you think? Let us know on social media. All right, that's it for the news for this week. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, it's Viewpoint. All roads are now leading to WrestleMania. We'll see you after this. Check out All Elite Wrestling Explosion exclusively here at TSC. The Bite Size Podcast released weekly will give you the breakdown from what has happened on Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. This quick stopping podcast will recap all of the slams, all of the body slams, and the suplexes. Welcome back to the Squared Circle. Andy here, of course, and this is Viewpoint, where we're going to be talking all about the road to WrestleMania. And of course, that is a bit of a, a play because, as we know, Cody Rhodes won back to back Royal Rumbles uh, for the first time in 25 years since Stone Cold Steve Austin this past Saturday at the PLE. So, what does that mean? Now, the only reason I'm asking that question is. Up until now, I think everybody considered it was going to be Roman Reigns to finish the story. And whereas I think that is still going to happen, the promo that took place last night on WWE Raw between Rollins and Cody Rhodes potentially has added fuel to the fact that it could be Rollins versus Rhodes 4. He made a really good point. The Undisputed Championship is more the Hollywood title. It's more the Hollywood Hulk Hogan. The World Heavyweight Championship that's what Dusty knew it as. That's what Dusty worked for. So I'm kind of thinking, do you know what? Either way, I'm happy with whichever way Cody Rose decides to go or whichever way they book the match. Because I think what you're about to see, either way, is a win for fans. Whether or not it's Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes at the main event at WrestleMania 40, which Cody Rhodes will then win. Or is it Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes, where Cody Rhodes will then win? I think the result is always going to be the same, but it's whether or not you want to see the championship. 
personally, I'm kind of predicting, and I'm going to go through a predicted early idea card for WrestleMania 40 in just a second. But, you know, I think it's a given that Cody is going to be going after Roman Reigns. Twofold. Number one, he will finish the story. There's a lot of rumbling on social media about they're not going to give it to Cody. It's not going to happen. There's still more legs in this story. I disagree. I don't think you can do that. I think you have to give it to Cody now. They've booked themselves into a corner with the whole 2K24 cover with the tagline of 2K24 being finish the story with 40 years of WrestleMania. I also think it's going to be historical when they take that title off Roman Reigns, his 1500, 1600 day run as WWE champion will be coming to an end. And it's as equal now in terms of preference and priority as the streak as Lesnar defeating the streak. If Cody does that, he will go in the history books. He will be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. Going up against Seth Rollins, there isn't that suspension of disbelief. We know Rollins is hurt. I think it's very clear to say we know Rollins will walk in to WrestleMania as champion, but he ain't going to be walking out. So where's the challenge for Rhodes? We know the promos that Cody, Paul Heyman, and Roman Reigns can do. We know they're excellent. So let's keep it up. Let's run it. Let's see where we go on this. And we haven't got the Sami Zayn um, interaction as we did last year. This is a clear build-up now to WrestleMania. Rhodes being on SmackDown. Rhodes being the face. Now, whether or not the championship will stay on SmackDown or whether it will move to Raw... That is a different kettle of fish. Because bear in mind, you could have someone like LA Knight yeah, win the Elimination Chamber in Australia later this month and walk out to challenge Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title. He could then move it, take it to SmackDown. Cody could take the WWE title to Raw. Who knows? But it is opening up the field. Why is it opening up the field? Because CM Punk is out for four to six months with a torn tricep. Have you seen the footage? Did you see the footage on the Rumble where Drew got him into the underarm DDT? You could physically see CM Punk snap that tricep. Um, It was a cracking promo on Monday Night Raw that CM Punk did. And I think Drew McIntyre as well, being the adversary coming out and saying, I didn't sleep, but when I found out you were injured and I'd taken you out, I slept like a baby. That was just beauty it was amazing because why wouldn't the hill say that he's taken out the dastardly cm punk the guy he considers to be the cancer of the company it was beautifully done now whether or not drew mcintyre will go into that match against seth rollins i don't know as of now he hasn't signed a contract extension with wwe he's still set to leave after wrestlemania so there is not a guarantee that that McIntyre will even be competing at WrestleMania. But if he does, he would be the natural fit to take Punk's spot. But what happens to CM Punk? Because really, this is all elite wrestling all over again. CM Punk was on the injured list more than he was on the active list. Well, actually, he was either on the injured list, the suspended list, but pretty much never on the active list. So if you're WWE, you've now got to be sat there thinking, what have we signed on to here? If he comes back from this injury, how long is it going to be before he's out again? That is the risk. Now, Bailey won the Women's Royal Rumble this past Saturday night. And who is she going to choose? EO Sky from Damage Control or Rhea Ripley? Rhea Ripley's issued the challenge on X. Let's make it an Iron Woman match at WrestleMania. Rumours are that the Elimination Chamber in Perth in February will be to crown the number one contender to Rhea Ripley and the WWE Women's World Heavyweight Championship. Again, I got predictions on that. I got some ideas on that, but I kind of don't want Bailey to face Ripley. Um, I think that what we're going to do now is see this, impl- this slow face turn by Bailey. Okay, and it's already starting because damage control, there's already rumblings of, you know, you need to go out and win the, the, the Royal Rumble. That's what Dakota Kai said. Bailey did it. The Kabuki Warriors have won the women's tag team titles. EO Sky is the women's champion. I think what you're going to get 
is a natural breakup of damage control or Bailey's going to be ostracized and then it will be Bailey facing EO Sky for the women's title at WrestleMania. But what about the plans for Nia Jax? Nia Jax, since coming back, has had an amazing uh, run. You know, had a, a great feud with Becky Lynch. Obviously, Che Cargill eliminated her at the Royal Rumble. I don't think anybody expected that. So is that going to play a part in Nia Jax going forward? I don't know. So with all of these different X factors kind of going around, I took the opportunity to build myself a early predicted WrestleMania card. And um, this is what I've got. So bear in mind, Raw is over two nights. Uh, WrestleMania, sorry, not Raw, is over two nights. So I am going for the WWE United States Championship. I'm going to go Logan Paul, who has signed a contract extension with WWE, will face off against LA Knight. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to tell you who's going to win this because I don't know. This is just what I'm thinking. This is early thoughts based on storylines. The WWE Intercontinental Championship will also be on the line. Gunther will defend against Bron Breaker, who will make his main event debut following the Rumble. Now, he wasn't on there. Obviously, last night, Michaels is saying you're not coming from NXT. I don't expect that. I think you're going to see Breaker on the uh, on the main roster. Rumor had it it was going to be Gunther versus Brock Lesnar. And if they are going with Breaker replacing Lesnar, then this would make sense. So Gunther versus Bron Breaker for the Intercontinental Championship. The Undisputed Tag Team Championship will be up for grabs in a four-way elimination tag team match. It will be the Judgment Day. Finn Balor and Damian Priest defending against R-Truth and The Miz against DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa and Alpha Academy. You then got the Women's Tag Team Championships. That will also be in a fatal four-way. The Kabuki Warriors will defend against Chelsea Green and Piper Niven versus Natalia and Tegan Knox versus Katana Chance and Caden Carter. I'm kind of going with this. You see where I'm going with this, right? The WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. EO Sky will face off against Bailey. This is where I am going to start giving predictions. This is where Bailey will win the SmackDown Championship. For the Women's World Heavyweight Championship, Rhea Ripley will face off against Nia Jax and Becky Lynch, the man. And you will see Rhea Ripley retain that Women's World Championship over the two, the legend and the beast. Drew McIntyre will face off against Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship with CM Punk involved. Now, we know he's going to be out, right? There's nothing to say he can't be on TV. So I'm expecting Punk to be involved. I am expecting Drew, if he signs a contract, if he signs a new contract, he will be in this main event. He will walk out as World Heavyweight Champion. If he doesn't sign a contract, he could still be in the main event. Rollins will retain and then relinquish the belt on Monday Night Raw. And then the undisputed heavyweight championship, Roman Reigns defends against the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes with the debut of Brandy. And this is where you will see the upset. And this is where you will see Cody Rhodes defeat Roman Reigns for that undisputed championship. It has to happen. This run has to come to an end. And the American Nightmare is the one to do it. Now, the Facebook group, Team MOW, is always active across every show that is run, whether or not that's Raw or SmackDown or Dynamite, whatever. And I've got some uh, some comments I want to read out from some of the guys. So, uh, Joe Aguinaldo, I've always been hot and cold about Punk, but I do feel genuinely bad for him. You never want to see an injury on anyone. I hope he recovers quick and gets back as soon as he can. Tommy Lang. I'm impressed they called Hulk Hogan a fraud on television just two days after they used him to promote their second second biggest pay-per-view, which Mike responds with, and they're still using him to promote the video game. What are you going to do about that, brother? All right, that's my all roads lead to WrestleMania. That's what I think is going to happen between now and WrestleMania 40 and a predicted card. What do you think? Do you think I'm... I'm even in the right ballpark. 
Would you change any of the matches on there? Do you think Cody will challenge Seth or will he challenge Roman Reigns? Do you think he'll win? Do you think McIntyre will challenge anyone? Do you think Punk will play a part? I want to know exactly what you think across social media. Let us know in the comments and on Facebook. All right, when we come back this week in wrestling history, we'll be back after a break. Check out All Elite Wrestling Explosion, exclusively here at TSC. The Bite Size Podcast, released weekly, will give you the breakdown from what has happened on Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. This quick stopping podcast will recap all of the slams, all of the body slams, and all of the side suplexes. Welcome back to the Squared Circle. Welcome back to TSC. Andy Evans here, of course, as always. What a show so far. We've had the news. We've talked about Vince McMahon and those allegations. We've talked a bit about Hulk Hogan painting a masterpiece. We've even talked about the Anoki Arena. And we've done a very early prediction on WrestleMania 40. So what's next? Well, this week in wrestling history, my favorite segment. And for those of you who don't know how this works, we take the past week from Sunday through to Saturday, and we pick out some of the most iconic moments from the past. So kicking it off, January the 30th, 1991 was Clash of the Champions. It was the Dixie Dogfight from the Georgia Mountain Center in Gainesville, Georgia. And it was the 14th event that was uh, first to be promoted solely by WCW. The main event for the World Heavyweight Championship saw the defending champion Ric Flair and Big Popper Pump, or the man then known as just Scott Steiner, compete to a draw. And you can watch that, of course, on the WWE Network. January the 31st in the year 2000, one of the most jaw-dropping moments in Monday Night Raw history took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At the start of the show, Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Perry Satin, and Dean Malenko appeared in the front row as guests of WWE General Manager Mick Foley. The four superstars had recently been granted their release by WCW at their request, and that was after Benoit had won the World Heavyweight Championship just two days earlier. It marked the single biggest talent exodus at any point during the Monday Night Wars. The Radicals, as they would be known, ran in during a match between the New Age Outlaws, Billy Gunn and the Road Dog, and Head Cheese, Al Snow, and Steve Blackman. 2000 professional wrestling, right? You just can't write this. January the 31st, 2006, again, at an Impact Wrestling taping at the Barclay Card Arena in Birmingham, England, Beer Money, James Storm, and Bobby Roode captured the TNA World Tag Team Championships from the Wolves, Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards. The main event of the tapings, Bobby Lashley defeated Kurt Angle in Kurt's last match with TNA after just short of a decade with the company. Now, I was at that tour. I wasn't at that event. I went to Wembley Arena uh, to watch TNA. And the uh, TNA always do put on a great UK show. And this one was no different. But you knew something was was unique about this one you know you knew kurt was on his way out you knew kurt was leaving the company you knew the build-up to what they were going to do and i remember at wembley arena they did this this great send-off for him and the crowd were rabid for kurt angle it was one of the the biggest like spine jingling moments when uh the crowd were chanting thank you kurt as he walked back up the entrance way it was a brilliant moment one i'll never forget February the 1st now of 1993, uh, on Monday Night Raw, the narcissist Lex Luger made his in-ring debut for the WWE, beating Jason Knight, yeah, I mean, I have no idea, in less than three minutes. On the same show, Brutus the Barber Beefcake made his first appearance in the WWE for over two years since that parasailing accident where he completely smashed his face and got rebuilt. Now, of course, if you remember, this set the scene for the storyline that was going to culminate at WrestleMania 9, where it would be Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake facing off against Money Incorporated, and you would get Jimmy Hart turning sides and going face for the first time in his career, aligning himself with Hogan and Beefcake, where he would stay for the rest of his career. February the 2nd, 1986, was NWA Superstars on the Superstation. That was held in Atlanta, Georgia. 
billed as a night of dream matches that were voted for by the fans. The show also had an appearance from renowned country singer Willie Nelson. On the card, you saw the Midnight Express, Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry, defeat the Rock and Roll Express, which of course was Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson, to win the NWA World Tag Team titles. The Road Warriors defeated Ivan and Nikita Koloff. Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, retained the NWA World Heavyweight Championship in a match against Four Horsemen Tully Blanchard as it reached the 20-minute time limit. And Ric Flair, the nature boy, defeated Ron Garvin to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. I, I love wrestling history it's just oh it's amazing uh february the 2nd 1998 monday night raw was in indiana indianapolis the first match of the night saw cactus jack take on chainsaw charlie otherwise known as the late great terry funk in a king of hardcore match that ended in a no contest after cactus jack backdropped charlie into a dumpster climbed up on the titan tron and launched himself onto Charlie, who was still inside the bin. Straight away, the road dog and Billy Gunn turned up and tied the lid shut before launching the dumpster off the stage with Cactus and Charlie still inside. And you can watch that now on the WWE Netflix. Uh, Netflix? I'm just getting ready for Netflix, right? It's the WWE Netflix Network. You can uh, I'll just give up. You can try. <laughs> you can watch that now by looking at the Raw archives, and, and it's just one of those moments. Wherever you look at the top fifty Raw minutes moments of history, that comes up. Now, the last one for this week, February the third, nineteen eighty nine. Main event is live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. On the show, the Mega Powers, Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man, Randy Savage, <laughs> defeated the Twin Towers, which was Akeem and the Big Boss Man. During the match, Akeem threw Savage out of the ring, where he landed on Miss Elizabeth and knocking her totally unconscious. Hogan carried her to the back, and when she came round, she told him to get back into the ring to help the Macho Man. Hogan called for the tag, but Savage, who was furious for being abandoned, slapped him in the face. Savage then took the championship belt and left ringside, leaving Hogan to defeat the Twin Towers alone. After the match, Hogan went to the back, where Savage was yelling at Miss Elizabeth. Savage accused Hogan of trying to steal both Liz and the belt, and then attacked Hulkster, putting an end to their mega powers partnership, and of course setting the scene for the main event of WrestleMania 5 from the Trump Towers in New York. The Mega Powers explode, the Macho Man Randy Savage, and the immortal Hulk Hogan, with Elizabeth deciding whose corner she was going to be in. It was one of the most iconic main events of all time. We will be covering that, I am sure, in the run-up to WrestleMania. All right, that's this week in wrestling history. Some crackers there, as always. What do you remember about them? Let me know on social media. And coming up next, we're going to be talking some chat GPT. We'll see you after this. Check out All Elite Wrestling Explosion, exclusively here at TSC. The Bite Size Podcast, released weekly, will give you the breakdown from what has happened on Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. This quick stopping podcast will recap all of the slams, all of the body slams, and all of the side suplexes. All right, welcome back to TSC. Our last segment for this week is Ask Chat GPT. We've done this a couple of times. How do we do this? Well, Chat GPT is taking the world by storm. So I've asked it a question. I've asked it to give me five questions about anything to do with professional wrestling it would like me to answer. This could be about any era, any company, any superstar, any topic. I have got no idea what these questions are, but let's find out what they are now question number one who is the most dominant wrestler in the history of professional wrestling you know that's an interesting one because if you're a wrestling historian i want to know what you think by the way on social media and on the comments let me know to each of these we'll put them in the out in the archive if you look back at the 1980s you could quite easily say it was the immortal hulk hogan the, the guy was on top of the business for, for for years. And that heel turn back in 96 at Bash at the Beach and WCW kind of continued that run. 
You could also say the Nature Boy Ric Flair was the most dominant wrestler. You could say The Rock and John Cena and Steve Austin were the two most dominant. But actually, I think you've got to go with Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. He has had an incredible couple of years booking by WWE. And it's been a slow build. They built him up as part of the Shield. He was the big monster. But he was green. He was still a rookie. And then all of a sudden, they flipped that switch. He got a line with Paul Heyman. The tribal chief character came in. And now you can't think of professional wrestling without thinking Roman Reigns. He is transcending wrestling. He's transcending pop culture. The most dominant wrestler? i got to say it's Roman Reigns. Never thought I would say that. Question two, what is the most memorable moment in wrestling history? Um, again, that's a tricky one. Most memorable moment in wrestling history. You know, I just mentioned Bash at the Beach. I think it has to be Bash at the Beach, 96. It has to be Hogan dropping the leg on Sting uh, in that main event and having all of the the rubbish kind of thrown in. Um, You just didn't expect it. Yeah, you just didn't. You just didn't expect it. Uh, And I think that is... It stands the test of time today. You still watch it and go, oh, there's the, there's the chills of Hogan of Hogan doing it. Which wrestler had the most successful career outside of the WWE? I think it depends on what context you're looking at it in, whether or not it's professional wrestling or whether it's entertainment. If it's entertainment, it's The Rock, hands down, or Dave Batista. If it's wrestling, Kurt Angle. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Angle. He took TNA. He carried TNA on his back. Um, but I think there's got to be a close a close thing to to Christian as well. What is the most underrated wrestling promotion of all time? I don't know. I don't know about that one. I really don't know. And who is the most overrated wrestler of all time? John Cena. Don't even need to go any further on that one. That was John Cena. All right, that's it for this week's edition of TSC. Thanks for joining me. Stay tuned to the Maguire on Wrestling Network, uh, where you can listen to Mike on Sunday and, of course, the guys from the Alternative Commentary Table. I'll be back with more next week. Until then, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think of any of the points we've talked about this week, and I will see you at the matches. So long.